Okay. Hello and welcome to week 37 of Vesta's Refit. Yeah. Right, we're on the Leo tonight, you know. It's boss down at Jamie's yard. <laughs> you gaff. Thank you, Bobby. That's Bobby of Bobby's Pizza, the finest pizzeria in Saturn. You owe me a free one for that, Bobby. Anyway, I'm in my new digs and nicely settled in, thanks to the staff at PSS. Being so close to the yard means I'm on call to tackle the stupid mistakes we've made over the last few months, like the refitting of the rudder, which we'll come on to in a moment. First, we're going to show you how we used butyl tape to lay down a Genoa track. This morning, Ton and I are going to show you how we lay the Genoa track. And we're going to do it properly this time. The last one we laid, we only put the uh, butyl tape on the bolt heads. So this time we're actually going to uh, lay it under the uh, entire strip of the track. The most important thing with this exercise is to countersink the holes beforehand. And this just allows the butyl tape to uh, create a gasket around the cavity. First things first, clean it all up. I'm just using some, uh, there we go, acetone. Yep, use white cloth, certainly on a white deck anyway. The acetone tends to bring out the uh, dyes in the, the rags we've been using, so. Yeah, also important to clean inside the holes as well, just so that the, uh, the butyl tape actually adheres to the, uh, the paintwork rather than to bits of dirt. Next, clean the underside of the track. Again, we're just using a bit of uh, acetone. If you remember on our Genoa track, because it was fairly old, we had a bit of uh, corrosion and uh, so we filled that in with epoxy mixed with micro balloons just to smooth down that surface. Little tip when using butyl tape, I um, prefer using scissors rather than pulling it off. It's just a little bit neater and it means you can cut your pieces to the correct length. Okay, here's another little tip. If you remove the teak deck and you've lost some of the depth of your deck, it's vital to offer up the track and put a few bolts through to make sure that they don't protrude through the ceiling underneath. So if we go and have a look down below now, we'll get an idea of where these bolts are going to end up. And we can see that Ton has already cut these to the right size. And so, they don't protrude too far down. And of course with a bit of butyl tape added to it, um, that will lift them up slightly as well. So we have actually cut these to the correct length, but uh, very important to check that because once you lay the track and you put your bolts through, uh, if one of them is too long, you can't just take the one bolt out because of course you would lose your gasket that you created when you put it in. So you'd end up having to take out the whole thing. So very important to make sure all your bolts fit. Clean the bolt heads with acetone. So this tape is a little bit wider than the track itself, so I'll offer it up to one side and then uh, just trim down this side once I've laid it.
Now we put butyl tape on the bolts twice and the first thing we do is we put them just under the head. Now the Genoa track has already got countersunk holes so that should fill in nicely the, uh, the cavity on top of the, the track. And then once we've threaded the bolts through the track we then put more tape on the underside and again we taper that so that it fits nicely into our countersunk deck holes. So the booter tape has been laid down and uh, it comes with a backing plastic so we're just going to keep that backing plastic on for the moment. What Ton is now doing is piercing holes on the underside and inserting those bolts that he's uh, put the tape on uh, from underneath and then after that what we'll do is we'll take the tape off around the bolts and uh, add the most important part of the operation which is the tape on the underside of the bolt which fills in that countersunk cavity. bolts are in place and we're just giving the uh, surface one more clean just make sure there's no dust and uh, another wipe down with acetone as well okay most delicate part of the operation now we've got to turn this track over there are 40 bolts that we've got to line up so uh, I think if we get a friend to help then that should uh, I should be able to help us get all the uh, bolts in the right place. So that's all the bolts lined up and what Ton is doing now and this is really important is that he's only pushing the bolts down he's not screwing them if you turn the bolts then it breaks the seal that you're creating with the tape so just to get the track in place is just pushing them down and then from underneath we'll tighten the nuts in place uh, holding the bolt down from the top key thing here is to tighten it obviously but not really really tight so that you can't move the nut. You can allow a little bit of play and then come back to it and tighten up a bit later if you need to. Okay so that's pretty much the Genoa track put down that took us uh, Two hours 20 minutes just got the end caps to put on and as you can see Ton is now just uh, dabbing away the excess bootle tape with a roll of old bootle that's a very effective way of clearing it up quickly and uh, we do have it extruded on the uh, underneath as well which we'll, uh, we'll just cut away so that's uh, laying down a Genoa track with bootle tape in uh, just over two hours I've been applying butyl tape to most of the deck fittings. Here you can see this smaller winch doesn't have a complete bottom. So when the winch is bolted down and the tape extrudes, we have to be careful it doesn't extrude into the mechanics. What I tend to do is to bolt it down and then take out the gears and clean up any excess tape from inside. Now these are the only deck fittings where we haven't used butyl tape so far. Uh, we've used a uh, polyurethane uh, sealant adhesive and this is simply because these are only held down by three uh, screws they're not bolted down 
uh, just simply because of the design we're not able to bolt them and uh, they get a lot of movement as well they get a lot of uh, opening and closing where we fill up our water and diesel tanks so there's uh, quite a lot of strain on these things which bootle tape wouldn't be able to handle so as I say in this instance we've used a, a sealant instead Bear in mind, butyl products should not be used around the fuel cap anyway, since diesel spillage will result in the unwanted breakdown of the sealant. A new boat has just come in, and this is what happens when it's a little bit too long, and they try and tuck it in the corner of the yard. Lorry Grey 2, a South African built steel boat owned by British couple Lorraine and Graham, were hit by another boat whilst at anchor. This resulted in the annihilation of their bowsprit and their cap rail. They'll be replacing both whilst at PSS. Life in the boatyard. I've now moved to the boatyard. Well, I live opposite it. Normally it's quite a sedate, quiet area, but this evening, for some reason, people seem to be uh, on one. <laughs> now these guys, uh, I'm okay, I'm interested in this though. Young, what is this? Yad Yadong. Yadong. This is Yadong. <laughs> Lovely. It's homebrew. Hello you. All right, cheeky. Kids playing in the uh, workshop area. Young, is she yours? Your daughter? Yes, lovely. <laughs> I'm going to go and see Pong. Yeah. Cheers. Good night. So yeah, Monday night. Very strange because well, I thought that perhaps everyone would be quiet and we'll go to bed early and in fact where I'm living, as you can see, walking through the gates of the yard, are the row of houses you can just see one of them lit up and that's the one that's two doors away from me. On the right hand side is Pong's, but Pong is having a drink with the neighbour and he's just invited me over. Now, he was a little bit tipsy when I last saw him. I don't know if he's there now, he's probably crashed out. But there's his wife and his granddaughter. Hello! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> this is uh <laughs> Video. Ah, oh, here we go. Bravo. Ah, hello. Ship. Two. One man. Yeah. Yeah. One man. Yeah. Two beers. Yeah. Money. Oh, you came second. Money. You won money. Yeah. Oh, you won money. Okay. So remember, we saw uh, Tui the other week who was talking about the competitions, the singing competitions, and it sounds like Pong has entered this competition and he's won. Oh, there he is. So you won, uh, you won money. Anyway, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to have a uh, sang song with these guys. I'm not quite sure how the conversation is going to go because they don't speak English, I don't speak Thai. 
fortunately, there is one thing we all understand, rum. And a good night was had by all. Forgot to mention that uh, Dan was in yesterday and he has been polyurethaning the forepeak with the spray gun this time. So he's now applying the top coat. As you can see, he's sectioned off that area with some cling film. Okay. So if you remember, we had this uh, switchover box that is now working. So with this, we're able to turn on the shore power. Um, or go via the inverter, which is there in situ. It's not installed yet. Happy to see that both the VHF and the AIS unit and the anchor uh, breaker all fit on that panel. I didn't think that was going to happen because of the uh, snake's pit behind it, but as I said in the last uh, video update, Nut has been doing a fantastic job of clearing up all the cables, so very happy about that. One functioning battery monitor. So the batteries are in and they're sitting at a healthy 12.7 volts, although I'm not sure that's actually been calibrated correctly. It's probably 12.6. So that's all good. And um, the rest of the stuff you can't really see, so now all of our main circuits, the actual plugs are functioning, which is great because it means we can plug in our strip lights and our fans into uh, my system rather than this rather dodgy looking homemade electrical junction box which I never really like touching but there we go seems to work I do wish Ton would uh, hoover up after himself every day though unfortunately we get a lot of sawdust in all the cavities and um, I think I'm going to buy a decent uh, vacuum cleaner to sort that out this morning we're going to have the rudder put on, apparently, and uh, also we're going to rebuild the engine. We need to put the uh, gearbox back in, the alternator on, uh, put up the uh, fuel pipes, put those back together along with the uh, primary, secondary uh, filters. And the reason for that is, is because the electricians want to start testing uh, the charging system via the alternator to battery charger, the Stirling unit, which I mentioned last week, which has been neatly installed, tucked away here, but so I can still see the relevant lights. So pretty pleased with that. And then finally, we've made a new cupboard. And that is the perfect size to house our Alusha 12 volt computer and we'll build a couple of uh, shelves in there which will store the hard drives and I think I'm going to put a lock on that one so that all happened yesterday and if they continue at this pace then um, I'm going to be struggling to keep up with the deck fittings so we've got Dang preparing the polyurethane and then behind him we just missed him actually, is the guy who digs the hole that allows us to put our rudder back in. If you remember, we took the rudder out, we had to dig out the tiles and then the, uh, the soft mud and sand underneath. Hence the two dirty great big piles of mud. And I've been pestering these guys to get the rudder back on for a while because we want to get the autopilot um, set up onto the steering quadrant. So hopefully, any minute, that rudder will be back in place. Well, just a slight issue here. When we put biaxial on the uh, rudder, we didn't think, stupidly, 
but that is now too wide to fit back up inside the cavity there. So we have a little bit too much by axle here, so we're going to from here round, we'll take off and we'll take back 5 mil. Hmm. Six mil. Six mil. Yeah. Can you can you see that? And Moo, who was only going to work for one day, is now going to work tomorrow, aren't you, Moo? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's not as bad as it seems. It's just a simple bit of grinding by Moo. So Moo's sending back the rudder. Dang's mixing up the polyurethane. And Jung and his workers are standing around waiting. <laughs> Once the excess biaxial is ground away, Jung's team then slowly jack the rudder up into position and the rudder fits once more. A mechanic. So let's just have a quick look at this rudder whilst we're uh, at lunch and the boatyard's quiet. Uh, what Moo has done is to grind away the outer edge there, the inner edge rather and uh, we've been jacking it up slowly and uh, it seems to be fitting. The mechanics turned up to start rebuilding the engine. Their completion was delayed however as we have the drive and the coupling unit to clean up. And finally over to my friend Hellas. It's not on. It's on. <laughs> no, there's no red light. No, there's no red Come light. Come on the red light. No, there's no magic red light. Okay, then without red light, hello and uh, welcome to the 37th week of Esper's oh, Refit. And by the way, we have Jamie's warm-up party for his new apartment because he's not sure whether he wants to go back on Esper ever. So he <laughs> took an apartment, but Nobody knows about that. <laughs> don't don't tell us. <laughs>